Bitcoin, absolute capitulation. Mm. Equities, I wouldn't say capitulated, but they've come down significantly. You know, here's a question for you. I've been wondering if we've actually seen the equity crash yet. And I know that we're, we're down, you know, 20%-ish but uh, during the year. But I would say there hasn't been that. I haven't perceived it to be panic selling, right? No. And, and so, therefore, you could be led to believe that that event is still going to occur. We could wait for it. But a counter argument I heard recently was, look, that panic selling event often comes in the heels of the newer, less experienced investors getting scared and pulling the trigger. Now, those newer, less experienced investors, they're not so much going to equities as they went to crypto, where we did see that capitulation. So maybe that panic selling event already happened. It just I was looking in the wrong place. It didn't happen in equities. It happened in crypto. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, so so I'm even in the camp where we haven't even seen all out capitulation in crypto yet. So um, now again, I my early career was trading through the dot coms. That was when I first started, and the dot com similarity, and this is why bubbles are very similar, is because we as humans are trading, trading, right? And we are ruled by the same emotions. So in every bubble, there's max greed. Everyone thinks it's so easy. Oh, you can just put, you can throw that dart at that board and just make so much money. That's a bubble. You know, everyone's making money. The problem is bubbles collapse. And in, in the dot-com era, we saw a ton of dot-coms go out of business. And we saw many get bought out for pennies on the dollar. Well, we're just starting to see that in crypto, right? I think Voyager filed for bankruptcy. Celsius is having issues. We saw the Terra Luna collapse. So you're starting to see that, but you haven't achieved that wipeout where you're going to see, let's say, 90% of all cryptocurrencies go to zero. And they think that's what has to happen. If you look at the dot-com bubble, when we merged, we emerged out of that, you basically had a handful of dot-coms. You had Amazon, you had a few other ones out there that survived. Everything else either got bought out or or essentially went to zero and went to, into bankruptcy. So I think we're due for a cryptocurrency bounce here. Um, I think we'll get up to about 25,000, maybe 28. But I do think you have more downside in crypto, at least to 12. We need to see people just being like, oh my goodness, crypto's done. When people like literally give up, I mean, this happened in 2018 as well, after yeah. the 2017 high, there was like this, no one wanted to talk about crypto. It was like Fight Club. You just didn't talk about it, right? Yeah. And, and that was the key when the bottom was in. We haven't gotten that to that point yet in crypto. So with the markets, and let me pivot, because I know you asked me about the markets, is the markets are in that same position. We've seen a drop, but you haven't even got close to capitulation, right? And so just to show my char chart of the NASDAQ here, or the QQQ, at the very least, I think we have to go down to the pre-COVID highs. I mean, that's just, to me, the pre-COVID highs are even just going there, even if we don't go into a recession, meaning that the Fed, if they're really taking out all the liquidity that was put in during the COVID craziness of, of just printing, printing, printing trillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Well, in the very least, if they're removing that, we have to go back to that pivot high. If we start going into a recession, then you start looking at like a trend line like this, which would be the longer trend going back to about 2015. Right. And both of these, by the way, are quite a bit lower. I mean, we're talking about 15% lower here, and this would be about 20% lower at that point, or maybe even a little bit more. So I think that the, the equity markets still have a long way to go. We haven't even seen an earnings recession yet where earnings start to drop versus still going higher. Um, the, the consumer is certainly pulling back now, even after the reopening we're seeing in the US here, consumer being much, much more careful. So I think, again, equity markets still have more downside and, and after a bounce, crypto likely as well. And so there's a lot of talk in the media right now about you know, recession coming to the U.S. What are your thoughts there, Gareth? I do. I do think so. I think I think the Fed is just like they always do. They're late to the party. And when they're late to the party, they overcompensate. So they're the person that comes in late and they have to make that big scene and jump up and down. So everyone notices them at the party. And, and you know, not to make light of it, because it's obviously affecting the economy, but, but that's what they're doing. They're overcompensating. They did this in 2009 when we saw the, the collapse. They came out with gangbusters and printed tons of money. Um, now we're seeing it again on the opposite side where inflation finally reared its ugly head. And now they're trying to play catch up. And the problem with catch up is that they're going to go too far and they're going to push us into recession. So, so again, I think by the end of 2022 to early 2023, we're probably talking about a recession here. Interesting. Okay. Now what? Notice, notice my, my, my screens, just like when I said recession, they just shut down. 
<laughs> I did. It was not lost on me. Um, what do you hold for the long term, Gareth? What are your What are your safe havens? Your Your war chest, your insurance policies. If all your bets go south, you know what do you hold to know that you're going to be all right? So, so the main thing right now, and this is what I what I have currently, which I'm long in the long term. I have five percent of my net worth in gold. And usually, most of it's physical gold, to be honest. And again, that I look at that like insurance, where if I woke up tomorrow and the grid was down, the banks were closed, um, I couldn't get money out of an ATM. Well, at least I got some gold, right? And I think that's important to think about, where it's kind of your insurance policy about against all out collapse of the mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. um, having said that, I also hold for the next multiple years other other investments in silver um, as well as other metals. Platinum's down here starting to accumulate some platinum. Um, some of these metals where I believe that inflation is going to be higher than 2% for the longer term, I think that's really going to be beneficial. Um, so those are my main ones. I do plan on picking up Bitcoin. And in fact, I, in all fairness, at 19,000, I started my beginning HODL position, um, to use that term, where I basically allocated a percentage of my net worth, same thing, for Bitcoin, and I bought one sixth of what I want to accumulate at 19. And then basically every two, 3,000 lower, I'll buy another one sixth. So up to, up to five additional entries. Um, that's dollar cost averaging, safest thing to do. Doesn't guarantee a winning trade, but at least I'm not guessing at a particular low and staking the whole entire amount on that low. So I would strongly recommend people do that as investors. You know, never believe, uh, and this is interesting. Let me say this. When I was a retail new investor and trader, I would always go into a trade gangbusters because I was like, I'm going to be right. This is a great point. It's going to play out to my thesis. And then I got hammered so many times that I started to say, wait a minute, maybe I should just buy a small percentage of what I want to own. And then if it does go lower, like it often does, I can pick up a little bit more. Usually my thesis ends up being correct. The timing is always the trickiest thing. So dollar cost averaging helps on that front immensely. I'm with you. I'm with you. And I, I play crypto the same way. I actually stopped buying Bitcoin about a year and a half ago. I just felt like it got a bit crazy. And, yeah. um, and I don't believe that I have the ability to time that market. So for me, it's, you know, it's a five, 10 year position, a dollar cost average in, but I just started buying again two weeks ago. I hadn't bought Bitcoin nice. in about a year and a half, but I felt like, okay, now I'll, I'll probably restart that process and let it roll. For I the, like it, man. I like it. And I think that's, I think that's super important to kind of go with that mental side, you know, understanding that it's so hard to pick bottoms and then this way you can do it. And, and I'm a big long-term believer in crypto as much as I, I think it can go lower. And I do think eventually it will yeah. just, if you're doing small positions, you just dollar cost average and then let things take their course. And remember that bear markets and winters, they're going to make you think you're going to like, it's going to make anyone that's bullish panic. That's what a bear market does when it's bottoming out. So you have to mentally be prepared for that and basically re-ask re yourself, is my thesis intact? Is the Fed still going to print money in, during the next you know, depression slash recession? Or is, is crypto still a, a run on Bitcoin of 21 million? You know, all these things you have to just continue to say to yourself. Yeah. And it's easier to weather those storms if you have some of that insurance policy, whether, you know, it sounds like for you and I, it's, it's some gold, it's some silver, gold and silver equities in addition, maybe some cash, yeah. maybe some real estate. In other words, diversification, right? I yeah. think that's the key is because when people put all their money in, they get so nervous, you get so emotional that when Bitcoin does flip around, it's going to make you generally do the wrong thing at the wrong time. By diversifying, it's kind of like, all right, you know, it sucks that it's down there, but not the end of the world. So I'm going to stick with it. And yeah. those are the traders and investors that end up making money. Yeah, I'm with you. Look, Gareth, been awesome having you back on the show. Thanks for making time.